Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the High School Star League League of Legends Season 1 Playoffs. We're in the quarterfinals here, brought to you in part by our friends at Twitch TV, Newegg, and MSI. We're here with another best of three coming up. As I said, it's the quarterfinals that we're seeing here. And it's going to be Rosita High School versus Crescenta Valley High School. I'm Kusaykin here with Casa Sata. We're going to be seeing how this best of three goes because the winner of this will be going over to San Diego for our live finals. And I got to tell you, as a San Diegan, there is nothing more fantastic. It's beautiful, 86 degrees outside. The waves, they are a roll in the sky. It is a beautiful blue. I'm looking outside and, man, the palm trees are just waving gently in the breeze. There is no better place to be unless you like snow, in which case there's like Alaska and Antarctica, but... We're not going to have our finals out there. <laughs> Final, live finals in Antarctica. That would be unique. <laughs> that certainly would. I, is Antarctica a sovereign nation? Or is it just unclaimed land? I'm not even sure. Yeah, me either. Oh, I've always oh, wondered about that. That's the thing. Anyway, in this game, I just realized we have a Lulu play, being played by Morten Morte, but we have a Lulu Mainunu on the other team. He's playing Elise, but, you know. Yeah, Lulu Mainunu. He's going to be taking the Elise in the jungle, starting off at the blue. Standard, standard stuff as that jungle Elise ever since she was released. I mean, really, she's just such a popular champion. Excellent early game dueler. Transitions with huge utility into late game fights and team fights. Very, very powerful and potent. If she can lock a target down long enough, that's going to be Kal-El on Zed just jumping onto them a fail tail on Twitch, following up with his Ratatat tat Really, really interesting stuff. On the other hand, though, it's going to be Fallout Reach taking Nocturne in the jungle. Now, Nocturne's fallen off a little bit ever since the Feral Flare has come out because it really forces a choice. Do I build tanky Nocturne or do I build Feral Flare Nocturne and try to go for assassinations? Yeah. That's a good question. Because, <laughs> you know, okay, so with this team right now, you pr I would say you'd probably want to go tankier. Actually, no, that's a really good question. He does have a hold on bottom lane. We're actually seeing some aggression coming out. Oh, Pole finds Morta. He gets pulled right back. Flay knocks him away. Ignite is ticked down. Heal is continuing to burn the opposite direction of his health bar, bringing it back up. Morta Merte <laughs> walks away with his life. But Wazers and yeah. Failtail really coming out on top there. One yeah, summoner spell burned for two. Yeah, the hit level two. You want to go for aggression on a Thresh and Twitch lane. You have a lot of it as well if you want to put it out. So that is what they were going for there. And it does be slightly successful, so Waz is definitely looking for some aggression. He has talking to Brace, or Black Shield, whatever. So, definitely is looking for a bit more aggression. Yeah, I like the aggressive pick on Wazer's Thresh. If he can land the hooks, he can be really, really effective. And taking the early flay means he's going to get bonus damage with all of his auto attacks. By staggering out the pulls with the flays and the auto attacks, he's going to have a pretty decent time bullying just a good kid and Morta Morte away because there isn't a lot of sustain in that lane composition. Ooh. And the pull finds just good kid nice hook, once yeah. again. Flay knocks him back. Poison ticking away. He's going to be taking a lot of damage. Poison takes down. Flash. First blood picked up by a fail to exhaust. Keeps him in turret range, but he's just going to turn around and walk out of this follow-up. Looking for a bit of follow-up. As Noggin Whacker knocks. Wag Wax Noggins. Yeah. <laughs> I totally didn't even get the pronunciation. Noggin right across the face. Flash hook. It pulls Mortuerte right back in. In the poison. Fail tail gets yet another kill. Double kill in the bottom lane. He's up 12 CS and two kills over that Lucian. Wazers is coming up big on this Thresh to start out this game. Really great hooks to start it out. Just pokes him down. Gets some nice damage coming down. And that flash hook on point right there. Hook down Mortuerte. And he is living up to the last part of his name, which is Morte, which is death, because he is dead. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's the most somber Lulu name I think I've ever seen. <laughs> most Lulu players are always happy and upbeat, but Morta Muerte, no way, man. He yeah, is all mortality, about killing yeah. and death. Mortality death, we, we Google translated it. Mortality death. We, we knew Morte at least, right? Like, yes, least that, that one was death. I think that one was death. Yep. It's like. Dia de los Muertos. What Muertes? I don't even know. The, day of the, the day, day anyway. Of the day of the chickens. <laughs> day of the chickens. <laughs> and, you know, it, it makes sense that we're that seeing a... Most ridiculous <laughs> national holiday ever. 
<laughs> hey, I'm, sure that, I'm sure that exists somewhere. I just offended like an entire country. Yeah, there's crawfish festivals. Why isn't there chicken festivals? <laughs> yeah. I would. I for one would enjoy a chicken festival. Very good, correct. Uh, good question. But top lane, we're actually seeing a bit of a grouping here. Two members roaming up to see what they can do. Bottom lane hook doesn't land. Laza is disappointment. Not really. <laughs> top lane, though, we are seeing a three-man group. Yeah, Kal-El coming in with the rotation with Flash and Lulu. They're just going to bully Tang Tang away and deny him the safety of an early turret. This really solid three-man push. It's not going to be able to take the turret, but oh, they're actually diving now onto Tang Tang. Lulu going to be the first one hit. Repels away. Ignite ticking down. He gets the execution damage. Kal-El with the shadow jump is going to escape. Wazers gets a good flay into the bottom. Warner Muerte takes a lot. Failtail Silence can't auto attack, but that doesn't stop him from coming out of the silence with a fresh poison bullet ready. And just like that. 3-0 and oh on Twitch with the early Bilgewater Cutlass. Level 5 to the level 4 of Just a Good Kid and 25 CS ahead of his lane opponent. This is just snowballing really scarily for Crescenta. Yeah, really great early from Crescenta. And this is kind of similar to the last game we saw. We saw it was attacks last game. He was trying to shut down a rise. We're seeing this game. They want to shut down a rise even more. They send their middle laner and their jungler up to the top lane. To go ahead and take him down. Also, I guess want to remove Zed Kalel from Noggin Whacker, who's playing that cast, and as we saw, a nice bit of early aggression, got himself a kill with it. So Kalel wants to stay away from that. He's he's a scary guy, casting 4.9 casting. He is and very powerful service, indeed. Service Jumping onto Kalel now once again. Noggin Whacker, man, he is just whacking some noggins. Yeah, he has two levels ahead of him as well. So it's a nice lead. <laughs> And just like that, Kal-El, he's doing well on Zed. He's died. His his death to uh, Noggin Whacker is going to set him behind just a bit. But take a look at what Noggin, not Noggin Whacker, Kal-El is building. Vamp Scepter, double longsword. He is going for pure damage. And right now, he's actually going to jump on a Noggin Whacker. Does have the death marker variable with a fresh level 6, but instead he's just going to be protecting his blue, helping Lulu My Nunu by holding on to that part of the map. And again, it's 8 minutes in. Four kills to one. That's a three kill advantage for Crescenta Valley as they lead by a thousand gold. Yep, so we're going to be seeing bottom lane. Lulu, my Nunu wants to go for a gank. He wants to take down Lulu, man. He got a little, he's got to live up to the name. He wants to Lulu some Nunus. Or Nunu some Lulus. What, is, what does that mean? Consume? Know, he's, just, he's got so many spells. Because you could, it could be the Blood Frenzy. It could be the Snowball Ice Ball, the Absolute Zero. I think it's Consume. I think it's like he only has three relevant spells. Because consume is just wait oh yeah he wants to taste the purple. He wants ah. to know what it's all about. He's like I've heard so much hype about this. Lulu is hyping up the purple. He just wants to know. He just wants the knowledge. He wants the gift of knowledge. Well, the gift of knowledge not going to be gifted to him this time as he's just yeah, waiting in the find, jungle. Well, and you I, can find more gifts of knowledge at our website, elwells.hsdarling.com. We can find more information <laughs> about the high school Starling. You just, you just saw the opening. You had to take it. It's like, oh, man, it. I could pun this into an informative thing. But here comes a dive. Wazers tossing the Dark Passage, pulling Lulu my new new forward. Once again, going for the second gank of the game this time. But this time, it's going to result in a successful turret being taken. Lulu my new new. He's putting out some impressive rotations. He did waste a lot of time waiting in the bush down there, but it ended up becoming worth when they took that turret. And just like that, they're going to collapse onto the dragon. Fallout Reach has got his paranoia, so he is in a good position to contest it, but he's going to need some teammates to follow up if he decides to go in. Looks to be pretty good dragon. Middle lane action, Noggin Whacker. Exhaust drop down. Kalel using the death mark. Fallout Reach. He's going to be dropping the paranoia, jumping into the pit, but no, the flay takes it. Lulu, my Nunu, goes down. Final reach, he's going to be flashing the wall, but gets pulled backwards. Wazers with the ignite in the box. Picks up a kill. Wazers making plays what? on Thresh, while Flash is going on to Tang Tang in the top lane. Is just going to bully him away. What a play by Wazers there. So first off, oh my gosh, he predict he he flashed over the wall. Final reach flashed over the dragon wall and the... Death Sentence found home, hooked onto him, and Wazza just pulled it over and he just dashed over it. Helped get that kill. He actually got the kill himself, but Fallout Reach wanted to seal away that dragon. He went in with the paranoia. He actually smited a bit early, and as you said, the Flay was the one that picked up the dragon. So Wazza's man, he gets a dragon and a kill for his troubles there. 
really great play coming out from him, and he's really showing a lot of mastery on that match. It's 10 minutes and 30 seconds in, and a failed tail for the AD carry for Crescenta Valley has got a completed Blade of the Ruined King. And remember, this is the 4.9 patch, so that still does 15% of your target's maximum health when you use the activatable, plus the percentage shred with every auto attack, which is basically an AoE whenever you drop that Ratatat tap. But here's a fail tail going in onto just a good <gasps> kid. You're gonna find a lot of flash play. It's not gonna get the pull. And Wazers trading flash for a flash. Now Fallout Reach was in position to follow up, but I don't even think he had the damage. Because a fail tail is just so strong. Yep, you wanna go for another flash hook? Was very close though. Certainly could have been. Flash hook Kyle L now trading with Noggin Whacker. Noggin Whacker sees some noggins that need whacking. I'm gonna jump on the call out just a bit. Try to force him away. That's an early build to water cutlass brutalizer being picked up for Zed. Looks like he's going for that pure damage assassination popularized at the end of season three. The faker build, as some people like to call it. And Deathmark is dropped. Noggin Whacker. Does he have the whacker to get that noggin? Deathmark ah. is dropped. Kalel showing us how to play Zed, dropping that line of shadows and picking up a kill. He was all over the place with the shadows there, and he just had the damage for that one, really. Ignite being dropped down, Deathmark as well, and he just had enough damage going down here. And that was a really nice ult coming off for Kalel. Kalel trading back that early death, and look at the damage on the Just a Good Kid. Lulu by Nunu, he's going deep on the Tank Tank, gets snared under the turret. You can't repel while you're snared, at least. Comes down. He's gonna have to be careful here. Takes a quick overload. Tank Tank doesn't have enough. Dragon to the ascent, used to allow Flash to escape, and what was going to be a dive, miscommunication, Ends up as a retreat. Tang Tang, really nice usage of the abilities there. Able to get away, follow, which is actually in the top lane. He wants to get onto Lulu Manunu. And Tang Tang does pick up the kill. And overall, it's going to be a great play from Tang Tang there. Obviously, Tower helping him out quite a bit. But he does pick up a kill after it with some help from his jungler. With some help from my friends. Definitely worth Three to six right now as Crescenta Valley lead. They're up a good two and a half thousand gold. Only 13 minutes in. They've got just a good kid pressured under his tier two turret. He just cannot afford to trade with that Wazers and Failtail. And even the roam from Noggenwacker is spotted out. Seems as though Re Rosetta oh. is having a lot of trouble. Wow. The flay gets tossed out. I, I keep saying the flay. That's the hook. That's the death. That? I hit it, man. That was a close play. I mean, ah, oh, you got me out to it as well. Here's the paranoia. Paranoia gets dropped. Failtail gets caught down. Box denies the chase. The fear still is going to find Failtail. He's got enough damage, but Wazers decides he's going to trade his life for that Twitch any day. That's a support for you, ladies and gentlemen. He says, you know what? Not only am I going to get him, am I going to get him 3 0 one I will die in his place as well. He just put a pink one in, in the sight wood, like right in front of them. I'm not sure what he was trying to do there. <laughs> This just gave him a bit of gold. Anyway, though, four-man roam down to the bottom lane. Used very well. Teleport back up to the top for Tang Tang as well. So it was a nice roam. Picked up the kill. Got away with it. Now follow Reach taking the red buff. Lulu Mainunu is around. And Lulu Mainunu gets the cocoon. He's landing a lot of damage on the fallout. But the death mark from kal -El is going to secure that. Lulu doesn't even need to follow up. He just takes the kill away from his mid laner. Doesn't even care. Bye, red buff. Yeah, it's more important. Right. Elise he needs, needs that red buff. So much, so vital. He needs that. He needs extra venom. <laughs> and just like that, it's still a three kill lead for Crescenta Valley. 14 minutes in. They're still only up two and a half thousand gold, but demonstrating their complete dominant control of the map by getting some powerful rotations. And despite Wazers getting caught out on the bottom, can you really say it was worth? You lost the red buff, you lost the jungler, and a Failtail is continuing to pressure on the just a good kid. Now Wazers and Failtail find that bot lane relatively undefended. They're gonna get off a few hits, but just gonna walk away with their lives instead. Crescenta Valley continue to dictate the pace of the game. Definitely. Follow Reach is roaming down to the bottom lane because Wazers and the Failtail have been a very effective duo in this bottom lane with how they've been playing out these fights, how they've been reacting to fights as well. Well, and Noggin Wackers have been having a bit of an interesting lane, but there is Spray and Prey coming down from the bottom lane of Failtail, putting out some nice damage, and they're really just trying to look to pressure this tower. They really want to draw attention because drawing down two members as they did before with Tang Tang 
and Fallout Reach coming down. Obviously, this relieves pressure around the map for the team, for Crescenta. And they're able to allow their solo lane a little bit more breathing room, and they just that's just what they're trying to do. They're pushing down this lane, keeping it pressured, keeping just a good kit and more and more Morte on their back feet here as they're pretty low. Yeah, and it's now almost a 60 CS lead for a fail tail in that bottom lane. 301 on Twitch with a completed Blade of the Rune King. Dragon has just respawned in instantly. Wazers and Failtail make a beeline for the pit. And so too does Carlisle after clearing out a few wards. Now there is Paranoia available for Fallout Reach, but he doesn't have the vision. Not only that, he doesn't have the damage either. And just like That's that percent of Yeah, they secure the second dragon to the game. Top lane, Lulu Minuti is looking for a gang out of Tang Tang. Yeah, he gonna, he's gonna get the repel, but not in human form, so he can't land the cocoon. Tang Tang looks like he's walking away. Dive coming in from Flash. He does have the Spectre Scowl for additional health, but snared under the turret means he can't get out. And the cocoon lands. Lulu, my Nunu, secures that. Here's Noggin Whacker. He's a Dragon Noggin. That's a unique one to put on the shelf of trophies. Flash flashes the wall. He's not going to be able to get out of this, though. As Fallout Reach comes in from behind, manages to get the Fear Tether and Lulu by Nunu all by his lonesome repels with nowhere to go. He is going down. Lava Kalo! Coming in with the death mark onto Noggin He's able to get the damage out. Noggin will go pop. Just like that, Kalel gets yet another kill. And Fallout Reach Ignited doesn't want to trade with Kalel because of that passive execution damage. He shadow jumps the wall, forcing Flash out of Fallout Reach. And that's a two for two. Yep, a nice two for two there. Good response coming in from both sides as Solo and is roaming up to that top lane. And we saw the two man dive going in, and they tried that before. It didn't work out quite as well. Or that well. Teleport coming out in the bottom in. lane. Wazers, he's going to see that coming. Drops a quick forward ward, but the ward is for the teleport in of Shivana. He flashes out of the box. Flash goes in on the Tang Tang. Wazers tries to flash, get out with his life. Paranoia is dropped. Is he going to be able to catch up? He's finding Twitch in the jungle, and that is going to be Wazers finally going down to just a good kid. Flash without that AD carry. Doesn't want to trade in. Failtail gets them into a nice choke. Here's Kalel looking for the assassination. Deathmark still going to be on cooldown. Failtail taking too much damage. He's forced to back out of this. No flash means he's going down, and so too does Kalel. Suddenly, we do have an even number of kills. Rosetta, bring it nine to nine. What a nice play coming out of Rosetta High School there. Getting into that bottom lane, and that's what they've been wanting to do. Waz is in the fail till they have been staying so far pushed, and they finally say, let's act, and this teleport comes into bottom lane. Everybody follows up. They pick up a nice amount of kills. Middle lane tower falls as well, and it was just good heads up play from them. They finally realized, hey, let's just go kill this bottom lane, because they've been pushed up to our tower for long enough now. They've been putting on the seed for too long. Let's just ride out, take him down, like Highland Land is there. <laughs> Battle Spoilers. of Blackwater. Spoiler alert. Spoilers. Well, no. I mean, it might not be. No one will understand. Like, if you haven't seen, like, season two yet, you'll, you just won't understand. Anyway. Yeah, it's a, it's a question of perspective. How, how much you know the Game of Thrones universe. So, Noggenwacker taking damage from Kalel in the middle lane, death. Mike, oh man, we just jumped around the stream with that, the screen with that camera. Yeah, Kalel just giving us a run for our money with the directed camera. Using the death mark to bully Noggin Whacker out of lane as there's not a lot of sustain on Cassidy outside of that crystalline flask, and he actually doesn't have one. It's a blue pot and a red pot. And just like that, Noggin Whacker forced to recall out of his lane, keeping the jungler in the mid lane, which leaves Lulu My Ninu free to roam around. All of which is 30 CS for his opponent right now. It's pretty impressive for a Zed over a Cassidy. Fallout Reach. Well, Zed is also, as you say, Kalel also has that lead. As, uh, also has that lead, so mm -hmm. it's definitely nice for him. So yeah, so far, Rosita aren't that far behind. It's only about a 2,000, well, a 1,500 gold difference. After yeah, that, the game nearly well. ace, that was four kills for none. But the question is, is Rosita going to be able to turn it around? They've got so much potential to with the Cassidy, with the Lucian, but the bot lane deny is so hard. It's a Bloodthirster against a Failtail, rocking out with the Blade of the Rune King and the Static Shift. So, Crescenta Valley, after that bottom lane fight, decide not to go down bottom lane once again. They actually had to duo up in the top lane, pushing it a little bit slowly. But now they have all five members in this middle lane looking for this one. Here's the engage coming out, Kalal going in. Deng Tang gets caught out in the death mark, but he's going to be able to soak that no problem. And this is now five-man push coming out from Crescenta. They're just pulling people away. The turret has fallen as just a good kid is splitting in the bottom. But he's going to be forced to recall, and we've got a few pings going to the top. 
Crescent is in a tough position. They've got to decide what objectives are the most important for us right now. They're going to swing up towards the top lane to take another tier one. So this was nicely done there. We're moving up to the top lane now. They should be able to take this one fairly easily. And they have just been on point with these objectives so far. If they take down this tower, they'll be up by one. And with the Zed and the Nalia should be fairly, very quick as it goes down. So, with that, going to be having a 2,000 gold lead. Kind of gold lead, actually. Gold lead has pretty much stayed the same, of course. Doing the time in the bottom lane, Bazita High School. Pushing that one in was nice for them. But the gold lead will be in favor of Crescenta Valley. Yeah, they're up 2,000 gold. That's going to be because of the turret advantage, 3 to 2, and the dragon advantage. Again, I, two dragons, I believe it is, in favor of Crescenta. Yep, so that's what it would be. And as you were saying before, we are seeing this reflected in the item buys. A carrier fail to obviously very ahead. Um, Kalel versus Noggin Whacker is actually... It, oh, it's pretty even. Pretty close. Yeah, it's pretty even on the two of them. Most of the others are pretty even. I think junglers, junglers we are seeing a bit of discrepancy. Lulu My Nunu is actually ahead. Well, that's actually because Fall Out Boy has a thousand gold to spend right now. So we'll be seeing a Blade of the Ruined King possibly whenever he goes back. But bottom lane, Tank Tank's in a bit of trouble. Yeah, Tank Tank going to be caught out by kal -El and Wazer's vision from the Shadow Meets kal can get the death mark and instantly Tang Tang goes splat no and the death mark goes down, but Fail Tail with the stealth. It's going to be delayed. Vision Ward is dropped. Fire Reach locks him down long enough and picks up yet another kill. He's not even going to waste time giving that to his carry with another 1,500 gold under his belt. He's going straight into the Blade of the Rune King. That's going to be an Assassin Nocturne if I've ever seen one. Even more gold coming in as top lane tower goes down, but still nice pickoffs around the map. Fallout Reach obviously using the Paranoia very well to dive in onto that. He is 5, 2, and 3, so he is going to get... A nice amount of gold after that bottom lane they had. Palau and Wazers go for Tang Tang. They did get a kill, however, we're seeing the effects of it. Rosita High School are pressuring it onto the middle lane. They're responding by trying to take a tier 2 turret. Teleport coming in from Tang Tang is going to keep the minion alive, and the minion wave helps <clears throat> that five man push take down a tier 2. They're now rushing towards the Dragon Pit. This is a good opportunity for Rosita to try to turn the game around a bit. Paranoia is going to be on cooldown for Fallout Reach. And Elise is excellent at stealing dragons because of the execution smite. And take a look at the vision on the map right now. Rosita High School know everything coming out from Crescenta. They have complete control of the dragon pit. And they, well, they had complete control of the dragon pit. And they have no problem contesting this. And they're going to counter rotate to the inhibitor, forcing the dragon out of Crescenta Valley. They know there's not going to be a lot of mobility. No, they're collapsing back into the pit. Indecision means a free dragon for Crescenta, the third of the game. And a Failtail wants to go in. Ratatat -tat is dropped. They're chasing Ash. that. Kal-El finds the death mark onto Noggin Whacker. Just a good kid is going to be taking the brunt of that damage as Flash goes deep with the dragon's ascent. Finds just a good kid low. Is he in tanky enough to get out of this hero? Wild growth is dropped. kal -El is forced to get out of there, but he goes down to Tank Tank. It's pulled over the wall. The box denies the escape. Suddenly it's a four versus five. And Crescenta Valley, they don't want to fight this anymore. Fallout Reach says, you know what? You're going to fight it anyways. He dives in. Tank Tank gets oh. front line. The AoE damage is too much. This is going to be an ace coming out of Rosita what? High School. Incredible turnaround. Like, an amazing turnaround coming out of Rosita High School right there, and it was just Kalal getting too far in. They decide, hey, wait a second, we just killed the deadliest member of their team. They completely turn that around. They jump in onto that. They have a cast in, they have knocked in, they can close distances very easily with that team, and they just jump all over the retreating Crescenta Valley High School. And it was just Kalal was too far forward, took too much damage. The box it was a nice box to look for some disengage, but they were not able to run out fast enough. Memories of Crescenta Valley go down, all five memories to be exact. Middle lane tower in an inhibitor tower goes down as well. And this is just Rosita High School really coming back into this game. 6 2 and 5 on the jungler. Kasten is also starting to look strong, and he is actually going for Frozen Gauntlet. You know, we see this item coming up a little bit more in Kasten, but it's still a pretty interesting item when we see it. Yeah, just because he can, he's going to get the additional AoE burst and slow. With the completed Rod of Ages and that Frostborn Gauntlet, he is going to do a lot of damage and be able to lock down his targets long enough to allow the rest of his team to follow up. Tank Tank, with his Rod of Ages of his own, and the Assassin Nocturne means that just about everyone on the team for Rosita High School are capable of doing damage. 
While we see a lot of bursts coming out from Failtail and Kal El, if either of them end up going down, Rosita High School are more than capable of turning it around. We've we saw that in the exact last fight at the Dragon Pit. Yeah. You know, if they go in with all of their abilities, they can do well. The thing is, in that last fight in the Dragon Pit, the Failtail didn't hit the Death Sentence. It would have been huge if he had actually hit a Death Sentence onto somebody. But it was just like right in between Rosita High School, so close to landing, but unfortunately, Wise is not able to get one. And it was just not able to follow up on it. They ended up having to desperately try to follow Rosita High School as Rosita High School was trying to run away. And as I was saying, Kalel is too far forward. Rosita High School turning around, and now they'll be putting pressure onto the middle lane with an exposed inhibitor. Crescenta Valley High School going to have to be very careful here. Yeah, this is a really smart play from Rosita High School without a turret to defend them. It's a solid 5 versus 5 fight with an Assassin Nocturne and an Assassin Cassidy, and they're in a fantastic position to burst a Failtail or Kalel down before they even know what hit him. And if the Rat-a-Tat-Tat -tat from a Failtail doesn't do effective amounts of damage, then there just isn't going to be enough follow-up from Crescenta Valley. It's a lot of weight resting on both Zed and Twitch's fa uh, shoulders. So if they end up getting caught out, then it's going to be a really, really tough position for Crescenta Valley. They were fantastic in the early game, but now that we're getting into the later game, we're starting to see them taper off. So now they'll be moving over to the bottom lane, decide they want to take down some inner, excuse me, inner towers. And they'll be having a little bit of wave play coming out here from the side of Crescenta Valley. Static Shiv definitely going to gonna happen. Huh? But the tower's going to be falling very quickly here as well as every wave comes in. Possibly the next one or two waves will be the end of that tower. Crescenta Valley definitely could go for an engage if they were feeling like it. It's just very risky, obviously, with how Zeta is actually not very ahead. They're only 1,500 gold ahead. It looks like a huge lead with five kills and, you know, two towers ahead. Actually, Crescenta Valley very close in terms of gold right now, but they're just feeling very pressured after that last fight. But if they would go for a fight, it could be fairly even if they do get the engage that they want. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on the Crescenta Valley right now to keep their inhibitor alive. If they lose the inhibitor, they're going to lose a lot of map control. So that's why they're staying so close to their Nexus. That's why they're staying so defensive. They need to be able to have the ability to push out to the Dragon, to push out to the Baron. If the inhibitor goes down, they're going to lose that ability to chase Rosetta back onto the map. Rosetta High School. And Actually, when really Bansheville came out on the Deltel, he recognizes that he has to be extremely careful in these team fights. He goes for a very early um, defensive item on an AD carry. Usually it's like the fifth or sixth item on them that they build. He decides to go for his third, you know, more major item. He just wants to be a little bit more safe. With this team, Thresh should be able to peel sufficiently for him, just the amount of CC Thresh has, and he also has some Mikhail's if he needs it as well, which he'll probably do. He probably will need it. But he just has to be careful there, and he Wants to go for a defensive item to stay alive. Yeah, pretty pretty decent pickup out of a fail tail. He has added a, uh, well, I guess that's a pink ward. For a second, I thought it was a last whisper, which is essential for getting through the armor of that nocturne and that casting. But for the time being, he's going for pure survivability. Doesn't want to end up being caught out of position. And that's just good communication from Crescenta Valley. Take a look at the items that they've got right now. Three pink wards. They want complete and total control of the map, which is something that they have got to take if they want to try to slow the roll of Rosita High School. The wards in Rosita are so deep, they see everything going on for Crescenta in their side of the jungle. The moment they get caught out of position, they're going to beeline down the mid lane to start trying to bully down that inhibitor. But for the time being, they're just going to drag it out, wait until they can find a pick or assassination. So Sweepers coming around, just taking out wards. 29 minutes in, these teams are starting to slow down their gameplay. They want to go a little bit more methodically into this game, of course. Game one of a best of three here. And Dragon going to be started up by Crescenta Valley. As they mostly always just start up these Dragons, however, it's going to get contested. We see the high school are hovering around. Flash is not in the area, so this is, might be going down. They're going to be going in. Yeah, Lulu Mainunu doesn't get the smite. Fallout Reach gets Death Sentence into the box. He's going to dive in onto a fail toe. Try to burst him down. The heels are not going to be enough. He goes down as Reach flashes over the wall. Callout 
gets the execution, but the rest of his team is isolated in the AoE. Noggenwacker with a big knockup finds Flash. He's going to be able to follow him over the wall. No problem. That's casted in Riftwalk is the name of his ultimate, and he walks those rifts so easily. <laughs> going to pick up yet another kill by shutting down that Elise as he's going to chase the Soul Survivor Call L away. And just like that, with the Naked Inhibitor and the Dragon under Rosita's belt, they are going to be taking a big advantage. Yeah, it was just for sense of Valley. They had a nice hook. It got onto one of, more one of the more deadly members of Fallout Reach. He just weren't able to take him down. And he basically just brought him right into a fail tail. He followed each just jumped right onto a fail tail. And he could knock himself out of that one. We saw Flash go in late with the Dragon Descent, trying to go for some peel. Just couldn't get any. And it was just Rosita High School's uh, fight to win. And now they'll have a very, a, a very nice lead. Yeah, Fallout Reach playing that perfectly by diving onto a fail tail and bringing him out completely denied the damage. And then the fact that kyle -El had to jump the wall away yeah. from the rest of his team completely left Lulu, Mainunu, Wazers, and Flash all by their lonesome. And despite their best efforts, they just weren't able to keep up with just a good kid and Noggin Whacker. And suddenly, Rosita High School, they're up 6,000 gold. I say suddenly, but this has actually been a long time coming. They've been slowly but surely increasing their advantage over Crescenta. A fail tale in Wazers, after taking an incredible advantage in the bottom lane, They've only gotten a single assist on a failed tail since that 301 Twitch. He's died four times. Yeah. Not been doing very well. He just gets dived on. I mean, it's casting a Noctin. How are you going to get away from that? They can completely rush that Twitch. You know, obviously, why you want to go for that Banshee's Veil? But so far, it's just been not enough with the dive potential that we see the high school have. With how strong these champions are now, there's 204 CS. On just uh, on just on to Noggin Whacker, and he's five two and seven as well. He's built up some very nice items for himself. Just finish his Zombie's Hourglass, so he can dive in and then you know use that if he needs to. Also seven three and six for the jungler, who is actually very ahead in CS against his opponent one hundred thirty nine to eighty two. Followed which has done very well, but Tank King's actually caught out in the bottom lane. He wants to teleport away. Yeah, he tries to get the teleport, gets flayed back. That's going to be denied with the poison ticking down. He's going down as well. And suddenly, it's a four versus five in favor of Crescenta Valley. It's a really good position to find themselves in, but with Super Minions barreling down the midway, mid lane, it's going to be kind of difficult for them to try to take any objectives off of this. It still looks like they will have to back out Tang Tang. We'll be down for another 30 seconds. Also, just use the teleport as well. So we won't have that. We see some focus around the Baron. Hits. So I'm going some vision for the looks like Presenta Valley do start it up. Yeah, and with this Baron going down, Lulu Mainunu is excellent at burning it. He's got the Elise calling his drop. It's going to find Wazers. Just gently tickling him away. Failtail is isolated from the rest of his team. Kalel goes in, going to jump back into the Baron pit. He's the last one still in there without his team following. It's pretty difficult now. Just a good kid and Fallout Reacher running for their lives as Noggin Whacker is just looking for the assassination pick from behind. But Just a Good Kid has regenerated back up to full health. Lulu Mainunu gets low, repels, but he has got nowhere to go. Wazers isolated from his team, goes down. Paranoia has dropped it, chases, finds Failtail. Despite the stealth, it is not going to be enough. Three kills suddenly go down. Noggin Whacker with the Rift Lock should be able to catch up to Flash, but I don't even know if that's going to be his focus anymore as it's five okay. versus two with a naked Nexus. Things look very nice. dire for Crescenta Valley. Yeah, this is looking like the one, but there's a lot of communication in that last play there. Kalal going right back into the pit. Took a lot of damage, was isolated, but here's a fight going down. Yeah, that's kal -El picking up Morta Muerte, but that doesn't matter as the Nexus turrets are going to be the focus for Rosita High School. kal -El taking a lot of damage. Zonia's baiting him out. Means he's going to die as well, but the Nexus crumbles. That enormous purple crystal is...